having a week, just as usual. Up to my eyeballs and cats, as usual. Same. Well, actually, I have fewer outdoor cats because even though I got big fella neutered, my other boys haven't come back yet. Oh. I did see Norm last night, which was very exciting. Okay. So I'm hoping that, like, as he chills out, he and Agatha have gotten friendly. <laughs> so I'm hoping that, like, as he chills out, maybe Agatha will be like, no, he's cool now. They'll start coming back because I got to get Norm neutered, but yes. he's not coming around. I can't trap him. It's it's like it having these cameras to watch them as we feed. It's like <laughs> Wild Kingdom. Tootsie Fruitsie. Right? Like Marlon Perkins yeah. in this Nine. from way back. I have my own little soap opera going on out there. Mutual fucking Oma. Okay. You got one guy's balls cut off and now the others don't want to come near. No, Scratchy's balls got cut off like over a year ago. They don't actually. He's coming back. It's just Norm. They don't actually cut the balls off. They go in the other way and they. Yeah. Sort of, it's not a, it's not like, it's not like they're chasing just, them around with a pair of scissors, people. They just take out the internal bits, which right. I can assure you, they left Simba's balls. Yep. Sim Simba has all the genitals. Um, no, it's, they just don't work. You see that that gray thing behind me that shows up in all the videos. That's the uh, that's my amplifier, it's my guitar amp, and mm -hmm. the gray thing over it. I thought it was a cat tree. Uh, that's a quilt I put over it because guitar amplifiers have this uh, this faux leather called Colex. They put over it, and they got fabric that covered the speakers and whatnot and cats will ruin that what's that coming to go so i got that to put over it so that they wouldn't get in there and scratch on it and it's worked so far till charlie who has decided he wants to get under that quilt that's his mission <laughs> in life is to get it's under there Narnia under there and mess with stuff I don't even know what he's trying to do. He's just like, well, you won't let me. So there's probably something good there. Uh, that's probably where you're hiding the treats. So I've had to constantly. Yeah, I had to, I had to expel Simba from my dryer this week. Because when we, when we first brought Simba home, it's kind of our own fault. Because we introduced him to the house gradually, like one room at a time. Because we didn't want to overwhelm him. He'd be living for a couple of years in a shelter in one room. So we kind of like, when we started letting him out of his own room, we'd close all the doors and gradually open the doors. So now Simba thinks that behind every closed door is a whole new and exciting place he's never been, mm. including closets and cabinets. And like, God forbid you leave any door open. He's like, hey, what's in here? So I was doing laundry and I pulled laundry out of the dryer and moved it into my bedroom and I didn't close the dryer. And when I came back out, I had a 15 pound orange cat in the dryer, just like, what does this do? They have the survival. This is a weird little room. They have the survival <laughs> instincts of lint. Yeah. Like, if quite literally, if, if you weren't there, the, half of owning a pet, fully half of owning a pet, aside from feeding and, and medicine and looking after all that stuff, the other half is just keep them from killing themselves they constantly trying to do terrible things uh, each week gathering the radio dead air audience about the worldwide interwebs find all sorts of horrible stuff bring it back here for a little segment we like to call what the fuck is wrong with you and uh crazy. Yes, I'm crazy yes, no. So no. Okay. All good. Sorry. Little tiny adjustments I had to make. All right. We're going to start off with uh, a car theft, which you would think that a, I'm getting all the wrong buttons. Sorry. You would think a car theft would be the easiest thing. Straightforward. Of all, once you've mastered the idea of, or or just the basics of stealing the car, you think straight fucking forward, right? You, you steal the car, you drive away. Very Big car, vroom vroom, escape. Maybe, however, before you do that, make sure the car 
is already on the road. Um, man arrested after driving off with show car from dealership in Lincoming County. And let's bring this over here so you can see. They uh, went to the BMW to shop for a car, but it all ended in a high-speed chase. Look at there. Look at that. See that? All that glass everywhere and shit. That's what we mean by a show car. It was inside the damn dealership. Uh, Muncie, wow. Pennsylvania. Man was arrested after taking off with a car from a dealership in Lincoln County Friday afternoon, leaving a trail of skid marks and broken glass. Happened at the BMW of Williamsport. Uh, what? What are you looking at? What? You, you said skid marks. Someone in the chat's going to do it. Yeah, okay. Yes, yeah, so that's fair enough. Fair enough. According to the Muncie Township Police, Brian Kilgus came mm -hmm. into the uh, Sioka BMW of uh, Williamsport around 1 p.m. to shop for a car, but it all ended in a high-speed chase. There are tire marks inside of the dealership where the suspect took off. Authorities say Kilgus was sitting in one of the showroom cars when employees went to do paperwork and heard the car start up. Now, first of all, did they give him the keys to a car that was on the showroom floor? Either that, or they just left the keys inside the showroom car all the time. Now, it, which you know, honestly, I understand what they're thinking. They're thinking, well, who in their right mind is going to steal the car from the showroom floor? Oh. Because I've been test driving cars lately because I need something that's better for the snow. And like every car I've wanted to test drive, these guys have to go on a Lord of the Rings-esque expedition to find and get the keys. Not here. They got to go to Mount Doom and forge new ones, apparently, because it takes forever to find the keys. So I'm a little gobsmacked that apparently... <laughs> Well, I'll just go get the paperwork. You stay right here. <laughs> what? You mean? Yeah, what paperwork? What? That's when Kilgus drove a black BMW through the showroom window. He then drove on the I-80 East and struck several vehicles. Muncie Township Police and state troopers were all involved in the high-speed chase. Kilgus drove about 10 miles away before crashing the vehicle at the Turboville ex exit in Delaware Township. Police then arrested Kilgus. So, so I guess the point wasn't to have the car. It might have been. I'm thinking what happened was he wasn't accounting for the fact that driving through a plate, a, a plate glass window is not like the movies. Because here's a fun fact. Um, in the movies, that's rock candy sometimes. Or it's some other sort yeah. of simple breakaway. It's not actual glass. Real glass <laughs> doesn't just Certainly shatter not commercial grade glass yeah that yeah. stuff is made to withstand rocks and birds i'm not even kidding and all sorts all manner of stuff smacking into it on any given day it's not it will give to a car obviously but not easily or rent so going through that you probably did a damage to the car you were trying to steal you probably might have messed up the tires uh oh i can't control it i'm going to slam it into other cars now the police are here. Shit, 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 shit. Why was there gas in the car? How do you think they get the cars yeah. in there? They don't use the force. It's they, they actually they gotta, they drive them. They, yeah, they, 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 they open up. There's a big area. They open up. They mm -hmm. unload the cars off the truck. They have to drive them in there. They park them. They put them in place. And they're supposed to take the keys which they did not do. Like, already, when you buy a brand new car, it loses, what, like 30% of its value the second you drive it off the lot? Well, he lost 100%. Like, how much value, right? Because you, you, you wrecked it. I just imagine, you know, I, I just imagine the guy, super, the, the salesman supervisor going, you're paying for that, Ted. No, 
No, you, you're, you don't. That's yours, man. You, you own that now. You get yourself a brand new Beamer. You enjoy it. Can you imagine being like working at that dealership and watching that happen? Or can you imagine being like, I've been shopping for cars. Can you imagine being another person shopping for a car? You're just standing around and all of a sudden a fucking Stallone movie breaks out next to you. There's at least one guy in there going, I didn't know that was an option. Can I do that? I don't know why I said Stallone. Clearly, I should have said Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel, yeah. Well, you're 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 clicked back about a decade or two there. Sorry, but yeah, I just or five. The, I don't. He thought how could this? How hard could it be? That was the whole thinking, right there. How hard could it fucking? Very hard, actually. Oh, we're gonna move on to another vehicle theft. The this would probably be the only vehicle I would never expect someone to try to steal. Of all the possible options, never would have thought someone would do this. Ever. And yet, here we are. This is from, uh, where is this located at? This is uh, Michigan. Oh. Oh. Amish horse and buggy stolen from Walmart parking lot while family shopped. An Amish family had their horse and buggy stolen while they shopped at a Michigan Walmart. The theft took place at Saturday at approximately 5.30 p.m. Uh, when the Sturgis Department of Public Safety recalled the Walmart to report of a stolen Amish buggy and horse in the establishment's parking lot. A truck driver parked in the Walmart lot had seen a female steal the buggy in the police, a description of the female suspects turned out police had already made contact with the 31 year old female subject earlier in the day at the same Walmart. Though officials did not elaborate on why they had spoken to her, what the reason behind the contact was. Police eventually found the stolen horse and buggy later the same evening. We were able to find the alleged unnamed suspect at a nearby motel. She was arrested without incident. Of all the, the things. Thing about, like- like you steal a car, all you got to do to keep it running is put gas in it. A horse is alive. Horse is a lot to fucking deal with. It's it's alive. He's he's a he's a baby she. Let's not you know. But the horse needs food and warmth and has feelings. Horses are pretty intelligent. Of all the things to... Why did you steal the buggy with the horse? Also, this is probably going to sound shitty. I didn't know Amish people were allowed to shop at Walmart. I don't know either. I I mean, I know there's Mennonites who have slightly different rules. Yeah. I don't know if the Amish are part of the Mennonites. I don't really know a whole bunch about it. All I know is... Don't steal their fucking horses. Yeah. Like you're lucky. Horses are not easy to take care of. We're lucky. You're lucky. We're in the 21st century and not the 19th because then you steal a horse. That's a little bit more serious back then. That's when they they get a rope. Yeah. 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 of, Of all the things to who is looking at a horse buggy, an Amish horse buggy, and think, well, it's cheaper than an Uber? No. No, it's just fucking. Mm. What if you what if you what if you called for an Uber and it was an Amish horse yeah. buggy? <laughs> I would actually feel kind of safe with that. It's not I'd like he can that. it's not like he can speed. I mean, there probably aren't seatbelts. Got another, uh, just, this, this is just utterly baffling. It's, uh, it's some kind of theft, some kind of crime, but I don't understand what happened and why. It's, uh, it's from Pennsylvania. What the fuck? 
it. There, all right, there it is. Load the page. Come on. There it is. Um, gun from Civil War found in trash can at Gettysburg Walmart. Has the Walmart been there that long? <laughs> Four score and seven rollbacks ago. <laughs> Pennsylvania State Police are investigating after a Walmart employee discovered a Civil War revolver while changing the trash in the parking lot Tuesday evening. Uh, police in Gettysburg said they recovered a Pieta 1851 Confederate Navy revolver after being called to the Walmart location. Um, no further information was released about how the uh, gun may have ended up the trash or uh, where it came from. Gaysburg National Military Muse Park Museum is located less than four miles away. I mean, first of all, 1851 Confederate Navy revolver. That's excellent because it's it's only been dropped once and it's never been fired. Give you a second. Give I'm supposed second. to get that. Give you a second to think about it. Um. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I'm thinking you're you're cleaning up the fucking Walmart parking lot. That's your fucking job. It's not great. It's honest work. No problem with that. But all of a sudden, let's be honest. It's probably not the worst thing they found in the Walmart parking lot. All of a probably not even the first gun. Yeah, it's fair enough. It's just, I'm just trying to picture a Walmart employee just being there like, what the fuck do I do with this? Yeah. Why is this in my lap? Why do I have to deal with this shit? This is above my pay grade. But also, it, like, who throws that away? Wouldn't it be an antique? Oh, yeah. Such an antique. 1851? Oh, yeah. Unless, I guess, unless it's stolen and you had to dump it, but... Probably stolen... That's what I have to think, that it was stolen. Probably stolen from the museum nearby and probably by an employee because yeah. any, none of the alarms and shit went off. And they probably thought better of it. And they're like, if I get rid of it now, everything will be fine. And it's not going to be fine. They're going to find you. They'll, they'll, they'll find you. It's not going and, to be and fine. As tradition, you will probably surrender. Oh, <laughs> well, it's only right. Yes, I mean, you know. Oh, fuck me! It's all the things to deal with just out of nowhere. Here's a fucking Civil War fucking revolver. Have a nice afternoon. Do we? Hey, 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 girl. Do we sell these? <laughs> Which out this stolen? Oh, all right. Next up, um, so from Chica the yeah Chicago area, Illinois. Uh well, I gotta say, as 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 criminals go, this one was fairly polite, but did not quite understand the error that occurred here. All right. Please give me the money. Three days after acquittal on bank robbery charge charges, man accused of robbing another shebank, another Chicago bank with shebank, another Chicago bank with an equally polite note. Come on, come on, stupid arrow. There you go. Scooch over. Scrunch it over. There we go. You can do it. You can do it. Come on. There we go. Trying to get the page to behave its damn self there you go come on why is it being such a pain tonight i hate computers I hate them so much all right there we go um probably can cut that maybe not i don't care two years ago muhammad woku allegedly walked into a bank rather hands over a rather polite demand note give me the money please thank you and walked out with cash he was arrested and charged now, this is you're about to hear about the luckiest motherfucker in the world. On Friday, a federal jury acquitted of a bank robbery, apparently agreeing with his defense that whatever he did, it wasn't threatening enough to meet the legal standard for bank robbery. So he had been arrested. He had gotten picked up for bank robbery, but because it did not fit the exact statute, 
they had to acquit him. Now, if it had been me, I would have been counting my lucky stars and decided if I would ever misbehave again, I might give it a little time to simmer. Nope. Well, I'm like, I mean, if he didn't show a weapon. Yeah. It's really not robbery, is it? It's just asking nicely. <laughs> Technically. And playing on someone's assumptions. On Monday, three days after three days after being released from custody, just been acquitted. Three days later, work who allegedly walked into another bank and handed over an equally gentlemanly note. Please give me the money. I'll pay back soon. And again, he walked out with cash. Now work who's back in custody. On Tuesday, federal prosecutors filed a new complaint against him, this time charging him with both bank robbery, which requires proof the money was taken by means of intimidation, and bank theft, which does not. At initial. But again, is it theft if you just ask nicely and they give it to you? Yes, because they're not authorized to do that. But that's their fuck up. You knew better. Is that theft? I, I, uh, you know what? Uh, you know, fuck it's power. It's part of the reason they have so much trouble convicting con artists. Fuck the man. Because I get it, technically, Tara. technically, you gave them your money voluntarily. <laughs> but you, do, do you want to go, go into law and help this dude out? You sound like you want to be his advocate. <laughs> I think he might have cracked the code is what I'm saying. Well, they charge him this time with something he can't get out of. I don't know, because I don't think it counts as theft. All he did was ask nicely. <laughs> if the employee was dumb enough to just give him the money. Well, he also showed up. Well, OK, you know, a mask and gloves. But then again, this is the days where everybody, you know, masking. Like we said before in the past, if you ever wanted to rob someplace, this was the perfect time in history, yet you did right. not want to wear a mask. You fucking idiots. I I have a cold. I don't want to make everyone else sick. Like, they, he might get away. Just the, the sheer audacity of the son of a bitch. The day he gets out of jail to be like, well, back to work. Yeah. Let's do it again. Well, I mean, they probably didn't let him keep the money. No. And now he's got a lawyer to pay. It's yeah, the, the uh they went to a city bank, pass it. Please give me the money. I'll pay it back soon. Bankers give to me in advance. I mean, technically he was asking for a loan and they gave it to him. Your Honor. You're going to die on this hill, aren't you? <laughs> Just saying, banking institutions have given bigger oh. loans to shadier people with less collateral. There. Well, here's one of those shadier people. This motherfucker. This is from Pennsylvania. Not only such a dick. But such a stupid dick. If there's anything worse than a dick, it's a stupid dick. Altoona man accused of staging $2 million burglary frivolously, frivolously spent it around town. Police say the $2 million came from his ex-father-in-law's life savings he kept in a safe at home. Altoona man is facing charges after allegedly staging a, staging a burglary to take his father-in-law's life savings before erratically splurging on vehicles, tools, and trips. Andrew Booker, 29, is facing, 20, is, various cha uh, is facing various charges related to a reported burglary at his home in February 2023. He alleged that some, someone broke into the house and took various items, including his then father-in-law's safe with his life savings of $2 million inside. According to the criminal complaint, police were suspicious of what they saw at the house, including the, tea, the key taken from a pot on the back porch being left on the counter. There was also a second safe that was left untouched. The victim said had documents and another $1.5 inside, but no one knew about that money. He claimed Booker knew about the money only being in one safe. Uh, I was noted the man was saving the money for decades, and a lot of it was older style 150s before they started changing the design in the 2000 
for counterfeit reasons. Through the investigation, police said they witnessed numerous ATVs and vehicles, including a brand new Harley Davidson outside of his residence in the coming months. Police noted in the complaint they were aware Booker was unemployed and going through a divorce when the burglary happened. Detectives were later tipped off by someone familiar with Booker and the victim. He said they saw the money at Booker's residence. Search warrant was received and Booker's home was searched. Witness and acquaintances, this is the one that just hurts my head that this one part happened. Witnesses and acquaintances of Booker were questioned or came forward to police saying that ATVs and cars were put in their name since Booker's license was DUI suspended. Detectives were then able to confirm these purchases at places such as Five Star Power Sports, Roundhouse, Harley Davidson, even the uh, Tryon Bar and Grill. One witness claimed Booker took him and his family to Hershey Park on his dime and gave them a $500 Visa card. Um, according to various employees and owners, Booker would purchase things with cash, claiming it was mostly an older style $100 bills. Detectives were at a few businesses where some of the money smelled musty and looked like it came out of someone's pocket after going through a dryer. Further investigation revealed Booker used a large chunk of money to, quote, take care of a girl he was seeing, Janelle DeGenero. Detectives said she admitted to knowing the money was stolen and using the money Booker gave her to buy him things. Well, that's nice of her. I, I just... You never saw Goodfellas? <laughs> they pull off the big heist and then people start showing up with furs and cars and Robert De Niro loses his shit? <laughs> Suddenly in the background, the piano bit from Layla starts playing. <laughs> right? But also, how fucking paranoid do you have to be? I know, right? To have two million cash in a safe in your home 3.5 million tara 3.5 million yeah. half of it was in one well, safe in a safe. he had a separate secret safe so then like you're paranoid enough to keep your savings in cash in a safe mm -hmm. but not paranoid enough to not let your son-in-law know that you're 3.5 mil well in I mean, safes in your home Think about this guy. Think about how much of a walking, talking fuck up this man appears to be. Would you honestly be worried about him doing any, having any sort of ambition whatsoever? I'm just saying, if somebody appears to be a walking, talking fuck up, maybe don't tell them about your millions <laughs> stashed in your home. Because even if he doesn't have a plan, he'll tell somebody who does. And then you get into a Fargo situation there, so. Right. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. I just, I, I love the fact that the girlfriend knew it was stolen money, so she's like, I'll go out and buy something nice for him. The fuck? I mean, it's not his money, right? I mean, what's he going to do? Be mad that you're spending his money? By proxy, maybe. But like the balls to to be unemployed, report the burglary yourself, and then just start having like new vehicles show up, and then put it in people's name without telling them in the first fucking place. <laughs> uh, last one this week. We got to have an international incident to work to round out the uh, the episode. Um, We have quite often explained on the show when it comes to air travel, there are certain things you don't say. You just don't say them. We're a little sensitive about it. This dude found out exactly how sensitive we are about saying certain things on a plane. British man. Aditya Verma appears in Spanish court over plain bomb hoax. That's how serious they took that shit. That Why is a, do people keep doing this? That picture you see there is an F-18 off the wing of an easy jet. 
<laughs> they did not fuck around. British man is accused of public disorder after joking about blowing up a flight. He's gone trial in Spain. Aditya Verma made the comment on Snapchat on his way to the island of Menorca with friends in July 2022. The message sent before Mr. Verma departed Gatwick Airport read, quote, on my way to blow up the plane, I'm a member of the Taliban. Mr. Verma told him during court on Monday, quote, the intention was never to cause public distress or cause public harm. Mr. Verma's message was picked up by the UK Security Service who flagged it to Spanish authorities while the EasyJet plane was still in the air. Court Madrid heard it was assumed the message triggered alarm bells after being picked up via Gatwick's Wi-Fi network. Like, okay, you didn't say it to the TSA agent, but no. if you're using the airport Wi-Fi... I just... The, the, the fucking audacity. I'm just saying don't put in your credit card info. <laughs> Shortly after the court was told, two Spanish F-18 fight, ugh, excuse me, two Spanish F-18 fighter jets were set to flank the aircraft. One jet followed the plane until it landed in Menorca, where the plane was searched extensively. Mr. Verma, who was 18 at the time, was arrested. He kept in a police cell for two days, later released on bail. Um... It was it was a joke in a private group setting. It was just sent to my friends I was traveling with on the day. Pressed on the purchase of the message, uh, a purpose of the message, Mr. Verma said, since school, it's been a joke that because of my features, it was just to make people laugh. Oh, honey. 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 You, I'm like, you, you, I, I get, like, you thought you were sending it to just your friends. Ha, 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 ha. Well, you're on the Wi-Fi at the airport. It's just, I'm. It, it makes me sad in my heart that he's there making. It's 2022, and to fit in with his friends, he's 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 making terrorist jokes about himself. It's kind of a bummer, isn't it? That's a bit. Well, even bigger bummer. He made the joke, and all of a sudden, here's a fucking fighter jet you look out the window the motherfucker's going and that's like normally when this stuff happens it's someone saying it to the flight attendant right. or yelling it like he was he was making a joke to a private group or to what he thought was a private group so i feel a little bad for him because that was a little dumb but you weren't trying to scare the crap out of everybody you just have shitty friends and you're 18 you're dumb as shit like, right. I was 18. I was dumb as shit. Everyone is dumb as shit when you're 18. If you're 18 and you're watching this right now, well, that's fine. You're allowed to. You're technically an adult. You're dumb as shit. I'm not being, I'm not and being. You're probably mad at us for saying that. I'm not being you're insulting. Like, I'm not being insulting. I'm just saying in no less than five years, you're going to be 23 years old. And you're going to think about everything you did this year. And you're going to say, Jesus Christ, that was dumb as shit. And, and then for real fun, when you're like 33, you're going to look at what you did when you were 23 and just be like, Jesus Christ. It never ends. It never ends. The, 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 the big secret is you're dumb as shit pretty much until you die. If you, if you could ever arrange some way to beat the shit out of past you, it would just be like a battle royale. Just like all of you in a fucking cage match pissed off at one another. Because like the older you get, the smarter and more vicious you get, <laughs> but the less physically capable you get. <laughs> so like your your character sheet changes over time. <laughs> like your wisdom goes up, uh, but your dex goes down. Just Motherfuck, do not do that shit on social media. They are not your friend. Like fun are they your friend? You you are well, and that's also like Snapchat is the one that auto deletes everything every 24 hours, right? But if you say certain keywords on Snapchat, you set off right. some fucking alarm bells. But I'm just saying, like, I can see that mistake happening because you're thinking like it's not even permanent this is going to go away it doesn't go away from their server by the way no no 
They keep it all. They, they're going to have it forever. Forever. Just don't say fucking. This is the like you're. This is the rest of your life. This is this is the thing that's going to fucking define you. I got a fucking F eighteen called on the airplane. I was that's that's never going away. Like we always say, this is going to go on your permanent record. Normally it's bullshit. Normally it's bullshit. Yeah, not this time. Not this time. And you're like officially old enough that it can't be expunged or sealed. I guess the the first thing we found out this week is there actually is a permanent record. We found out how to find it. You you cracked the code. Congrats. Can't advise it. We found out if you have a dipshit son-in-law, maybe don't advertise (laughs) where you keep your life savings. Your your $3.5 million in cash, you fucking psycho. You're, lu- you're lucky you didn't end up with fucking like Steve Buscemi holding a gun to you. People getting put in a fucking wood chopper. You're lucky. Like, how many Alex Jones supplements does that buy, sir? <laughs> um, we've learned that if you get lucky enough to get acquitted <laughs> for kindly but gently robbing a bank take the win yeah it's not like it's, it's not like press your luck it's you're sitting there going no whammies no whammies no it's not how that works because you only get three whammies yeah before it's the big whammy we, we've learned that you can be stuck working your shift at fucking walmart and have to deal with the fucking historic theft of a goddamn fucking confederate revolver you're not paid enough for this shit no we've learned that of all the vehicles to steal don't steal the horse buggy i i don't i walking don't steal the one that poops like you could have made it that walking would have been preferable to stealing the horse buggy. And finally, we've learned just because the keys are in the ignition doesn't mean it's the perfect crime. And also, tempered glass has the word tempered in it for a reason. Go Google it. Don't play in your heist based on Vin Diesel movies. It's not going to work out. What, you mean you can't end up in space? Shit. 